In this video, I'll be looking into the Haversheim formula, which makes it possible to calculate the shortest straight line surface distance between any two points on a sphere. There will be a bit of trig and Pythagoras involved, but most should be able to follow along if you've covered the basics of these in school. Let's begin with finding out what we can for this unit circle. The arc AB will have a length equal to the central angle in radians. With some basic trig, we can work out the distance from O to C. Trig tells us cos theta equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And because the hypotenuse is 1, that 1 will effectively disappear, making the adjacent side simply cos theta. In the same way, the opposite side AC is sine of theta. The distance from B to C can be calculated using the versed sine function, or Fair sign for short. You can easily see why this equals 1 minus cos theta. The Haver sine of theta will give us our distance from C to D, and as the name implies, it's half the first sine of theta. Introducing the chord AB, we can now work out its length by first calculating half of it. Cutting the central angle in half results in a perpendicular line to the chord, splitting it into two right triangles. Like before, the opposite sides will equal sine theta over 2 multiplied by the hypotenuse, making the full chord length 2 times sine theta over 2. We now have all the sides of triangle ABC, but let's see what we get when we plug these into the Pythagorean formula AB squared equals AC squared plus BC squared. Squaring each side gives us this. That gives us these values. When added together, these will equal 1, so the equation becomes this. Dividing by 2 gives us a new way of calculating side BC. Dividing by 2 again gives us an equivalent for 1 minus cos theta over 2, which is the square of half the chord. So now we can look at the Haversine of theta in a few different ways. We see this form a bit in the Haversine formula. But I want you to keep this in mind too as we move on to 3D space. Here I now have the two points on a unit sphere. The coordinates of which are shown in this table, along with the delta lat, delta long, and xyz values. Points A and B lie on a great circle, which means this red arc will always be the shortest straight line surface path between them and its length is what we're ultimately wanting to acquire by way of this central angle. We've already covered finding the chord length on any great circle. It's two times the sine of half the central angle. But we now need to find it in terms of the longitudes and latitudes of points A and B. To facilitate this, let's use a bit of symmetry and add some more points to the surface of this sphere. Point C is made up from the longitude of A and the latitude of B, while point D is made up of the longitude of B and the latitude of A. The differences in latitudes and longitudes between points A and B can now be easily visualised. Delta lat is this blue angle, AOC, while delta long is this purple angle at the equator, EOF. Before we can get to the diagonal chord AB, we first need to find out a little more about these other chords, starting with FE. Now familiar with the process, this chord length will be 2 times the sine of half the angle delta long. But what about the chords AD and BC? While the longitude difference hasn't changed, these chords are no longer on great circles. We'll still use what we've just calculated for chord FE but we'll need to multiply that result by the radius of the smaller circles, which will be cos lat A for the latitude circle through A, and cos lat B for the latitude circle through B. Luckily, chord AC is on a great circle, so again, this will be 2 times the sine of half the angle, delta lat. Next, we want to insert a line which will create a right angle triangle where chord AB is the hypotenuse, AG is the side, 
and GB is the base. Before we can work out AG, we need to look at CG. CG is simply half of CB minus AD, and this is the square. Back to Pythagoras then. Plugging in what we've just got for CG squared, we can now get this for AG squared, while GB is simply half of CB plus AD, and this is the square. Now we're on the last chord and the home straight. Starting with our Pythagoras statement and plugging in what we got for AG and GB, we'll get this. And this can be rewritten to this. Finally, we get this for AB squared. With the focus on AB squared, we can now plug in the values we worked out earlier. AB squared becomes this, and if we divide by 4, we get the familiar formula for the haversine of theta by way of the square of half the chord AB. This is the calculated distance for half theta. And now we can finally use the inverse to get the central angle. It's only on the very last step that we bring up the radius of Earth to get the surface distance, AB. If you're still here, thanks very much. That was quite a journey. I think next we should compare some distances on Google Earth. Well that's it for this one. Sorry it was all numbers, but I'm hoping you managed to follow the method. Please consider subbing if you haven't already, drop a comment, hit the like, and I'll catch you later.